I'm sure at some point you've heard a pastor say that in the church we are an Easter people. Well, we are. We're a community that gathers around one overriding belief. Jesus rose from the dead, and consequently, we become an Easter people. However, over these last few weeks, as social distancing took over the second half of the Lenten season, I remember a phrase that came to me on several occasions. We are an Easter people, but we live in a Good Friday world. Author Barbara Johnson uses that phrase in her book, Splashes of Joy in the Cesspools of Life. One reviewer notes that Johnson uses humor to offer a healthy perspective on the tragedy, trouble, and trials many of us experience. One key thing Christianity offers our world is a theology of suffering, and likewise, we all experience pain and are exposed to trials and tragedy, though we don't usually like to reflect on such things. We're not spared the story of the crucifixion from a few days ago. There it was in all of its horrors, an innocent man's arrest and trial, scapegoated to the whim of an angry mob. He is beaten, marched through the streets, forced to carry his instrument of execution, and then nailed to a cross with arms stretched wide, embracing the world even to his final breath. We don't like to reflect upon such things, but knowing the suffering, of love, the suffering love of God, well, it makes us who we are today. A church that says Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. We're an Easter people, but we live in a Good Friday world. In these weeks of isolation and self-quarantine, faith communities have rushed to our screens to keep people connected, doing the basic work of sharing concerns and joys in community. It's been the church's purpose since Paul first planted those churches along the edges of the ancient Mediterranean. Episcopal Bishop Mark Edgington remarks that through plagues and wars, even through upheaval and revolution, there's never been an Easter like this one. To, point, to his point, we find ourselves in an exceptional place this year. Never in my whole life's experience would I have considered that I would not be able to go into a church to worship with other Christians on Easter morning. The good bishop's thought extends the impact of today past even my frame of reference, especially when considering the millennia of Christian witness contained in Europe's oldest cathedrals, also sitting empty today on this Easter morning as well. If we are one thing, the church is an Easter people. But how can we be an Easter people if we're not in the church for Easter. Well, it occurs to me that though we are a people of faith, we're still people. Our limited view of God's ability makes even the most faithful among us uneasy when we can't see what we need for our faith to flourish. Likewise, we encounter as much in Luke's gospel as he gives to us the resurrection story this morning. Now, among the Gospels, Luke's is the only one to mention one additional detail to the women's visit at the empty tomb. Three words, they went in, are uniquely Lucan words contained in this morning's lesson. Now, some of the Gospels specify which women were at the tomb. Matthew's Gospel has a thunderous appearance of an angel. John's Gospel is decidedly undetailed. But Luke's gospel highlights that the women wanted, even needed, to turn and go inside the tomb to see that Jesus was not there. As they come out of the tomb, the man in dazzling white says the triumphant words, He is not here, but has risen. 
The women left Jesus on Good Friday, and now hearing these words, these women become the first of the Easter people. He is not here, but has risen. In the wake of the life-changing transformation created by those words alone, the church receives a remarkable charge to a new and hopeful existence. Moreover, instead of keeping our inward-looking security, God invites us to go out, share the good news, tell the world that Jesus is no longer in the tomb because death does not win. And if we hear those words, that he is not here, but has risen, then I am hopeful for a bit of peace within myself, unconcerned that the church is empty this morning, because my hope lies instead in the knowledge that the tomb is empty also. Though we live in a Good Friday world, friends, we are an Easter people. The pastor and author A.W. Tozer is bold to affirm that the Christian church is more than a group tied to a particular space for worship. He says, keep a Christian from entering the church sanctuary and you have not in the least bit hindered his worship. This is because we carry our sanctuary with us. We never leave it. Though we're not in the church this morning, I wonder if this opportunity helps us to affirm that we do not need to be in the church to be the church. Likewise, we receive the responsibility, especially now, to be out of our building caring for the people of our community, our country, and also our world. Now, you know that we're heading into a tough week, a time that the Surgeon General says we will encounter the highest number of deaths during the peak of the coronavirus's infectious wave. According to the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, this coming Wednesday, April 15th, will be the time when Pennsylvania's health care services will reach their highest peak of need in treating those who are sick. By all accounts, without our willingness to distance ourselves, we would lose millions of lives, even as we count the cost of losing thousands as too much to bear. How ironic, though, that in this time of our most significant brokenness, the most broken of our weeks, still to come, is also when the church celebrates Easter's new life today. We live in a Good Friday world. So how will we become an Easter people as our response? At the end of last week's worship service, I placed a picture with an empty sanctuary after the benediction over the open pews, the words read, the church is not empty. The church has been deployed. I take comfort in the idea that God must think so much of us that instead of wanting, even needing us to be in our sanctuary, God calls us to go out today, to live out today, to save lives through an overtly public act of community love. By separating ourselves from each other this morning, we willingly give up a gathering opportunity that, trust me, we hold so dearly. As we also offer our gift of sacrifice to provide wholeness, healing, and health to our families, our neighbors, and our community. My only sense is to acknowledge that our ability to express sacrificial love comes first from God, who is the one who shows us the way to love thy neighbor as thyself. 
You know, it, it doesn't only take a pandemic to keep a congregation out of the church on a Sunday morning. Several years ago, there was a fire that burned down the sanctuary of a church in Kettering, Ohio, a suburb, of, a suburb of Dayton near where we used to live. On the Sunday that followed, they put up a sign that read, Though the building is down, the church is still standing. Despite not having any building, that church wanted their neighbors to know who they really were, who their, what their church really was. And for our times, these times today, when our neighbors need us, we want them to know that we are a living church, too. In its most challenging moments, our spirit of faith serves a Lord who lives forever. And for the trying times when we don't know the future, I hope God will help you and me remember that the Church of Christ is a living church. And in the same way that this congregation has already served our community for over 180 years, I hope we will continually affirm Jesus' future mission for us because God's purpose isn't ending anytime soon. And for those who suggest that death wins, we boldly affirm that though we live in a Good Friday world, we are an Easter people. And so, even though we are apart today, we'll continue to sing our hallelujahs. Though we may want the surety of looking into the tomb like those women, to see if the news is real, God calls us out to love and to serve in Christ's way. This morning we see that the church is empty, but then we shout that the tomb is empty as well. And we share the same words said on that first Easter morning. He is not here, but has risen. Friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.